and a good morning to you everybody at Just About Watches. It's Kev here. Now before we actually look at the Prospects Paddy, we go into have a little chat about my friend the Bell. Now the servant's bell is not there to get iced tea delivered to me, although I could do with one. It's there because the dog is trained to listen to it. Now I have a little Bichon called Boo and he has rather long nails. Even though he goes to the groomers more times than my wife. Now he walks in and he's like Michael Flatley doing the river dance. And there's nothing worse than trying to do a review or a talk on anything when he is doing tap dancing in front of you. So the bell, nothing more sinister than Pavlov's training of my dog. Rightio then, so we'll go back to the Seiko Prospects SRP A21. I don't really know why I bother with the model because quite frankly most of us aren't really over enthused with that kind of detail but I have to do that because it'd be unfair. Now this was designed in partnership with Paddy the world's largest diving network and if one was being honest about it it is we know Seiko have been the innovators of divers watches from about I think it's 1965 if I get my memory right and please excuse me on that the brain tumor will addle me in times but but it is a reminder of the 70s Seiko mechanicals in a nutshell it's a vintage reissue based on the 63XX series if I can get that word out without sounding wrong it's gone on to evolve into the Seiko Turtle of the 77. Now, it is famous for its shape, and I love it. It is one of those things that you really, really love or hate. And I don't know. There's something so appealing about that pebble shape. I don't like to call it a turtle. I think that's cruel. It's more of a terrapin, it's, it's cuter than a turtle. And it's, it's almost as if it's aerodynamic. I know that's, that's probably irrelevant when you are 200 metres down. And that brings me neatly on to, to, to certain features that are, that are quite intrinsic with Seiko and why their innovation is so widely admired, is the size of the markers and the hands and indices. Using a Lumi Bright coating, it basically allows maximum surface area and depth. So that when you are down in the fathoms of 150, 200 meters, there's very little light. So that area with the Lumi Bright is going to catch as much reflection as possible. And therefore, the the very fact that you do have at least that better opportunity, that could save lives. So to me, I think that's a fantastic innovation. So is a little thing like the four o'clock marker for the crown. Because I know from experience in early military days that when you have a crown at three o'clock, it can catch on your wrist, it can catch on a rifle sleeve there's loads of different things it can catch on the straps the clothing 101 things now that even though it doesn't seem relevant is massively relevant it is a good well thought out feature no doubt in collaboration with very very learned divers so we look at all these different things and you can have the tech specs if you wish I try not to, to go into to too much detail because, quite frankly, I'm, I, I wonder sometimes, do people really need to know? But you can look at the magnetic re you know, resistance, 4,800 AM. It has a caliber 4R36 engine in it, a self-winding caliber with manual winding capacity and hacking seconds features. 
both absent of the SKX. Beats at 21,600, having 24 joules and a power reserve of about 40 hours. Depth 13 mil, diameter 44. Weight heavy, not the heaviest, but heavy. So we've got the tech specs out of the way. We could go into the metal, but really, do we want to go into the, the grades again? I don't think so. So, let's go to the bezel. This has been something that, that, that worries me. I do like the knurling on the, on the bezel because that gives more grip when turning. That is something that it, it not only looks pretty, but, but it's very functional. Now, sadly, it brings me to the Pepsi. And you can't take it away. And I know I'm getting reflections from this, but that's something that I can't help at the moment. I'm, I'm preferring to give my money away to charity than to waste it on hundreds or thousands of dollars of production. You know what I'm talking about with regards to watches. You don't need to have, you know, war and peace um, productions. You just need simplicity. Um, well, that's my view anyway. Now, the Pepsi's been done to the death. And I'll argue that until the end of the world. I think that it's been over-homaged and it's been now almost exhausted by Seiko. Virtually every model that's come out over the years, regardless of fine changes, and sometimes a little more change, they nevertheless stay the same. And an example I'm going to give you of that is one I prepared earlier. And that's just a simple, as you can see, Seiko 5. Yes, it is larger, but it's got the same colour scheme. Very, very similar, only this one is probably a quarter of the price. That disappoints me greatly because I really can't justify to myself so sig insignificant, I beg your pardon, differences really. Okay, the engine is far greater, but I can tell you one thing. I analogize this to a 70 mile an hour speed restriction. Both of these watches will go 70 miles an hour. This one in my hand will go 140, but it's illegal. So you only need to go 70 miles an hour. So the engines are often irrelevant. It's all down to ego. And sometimes vanity is... It overcomes its sanity. I would always say to watch collectors, especially people who are starting in the, the, the game, because it is a game, it's fun. Look at what you're buying. Don't buy something because people say it's got a better movement or better caliber. That's nonsense. Walk before you run. Realize that a watch has a purpose and unless you need it for a specific purpose, you don't need to be spending an absolute fortune. So that's negative one out of the way for this beauty of a watch. Because I still think it's beautiful regardless of the fact it's exhausted in my view. Is the day date? Do we really need a day date function on a diver's watch? My view is, and I've been in the military quite a while, is that if I don't know the day and the time, or the date anyway, that's for certain, what I'm diving, I shouldn't be bloody there. Can you see it at 200 metres? No. Do you need to see it? No. You're not going to go and see an octopus at the bottom of the sea and say, oh, hello there. Did you want to know what day it is? It's Friday the 17th. No, come on, let's be real. Take away the day date, discount the price. That would go a long, long way. Or indeed, it would go on to my third bugbear with regards to this piece. And that's the bracelet. Take away the day date, which you don't need, 
and spend a bit of money on working on this bloody strap because if you try to change a pin it'll never stay in they are known for falling out they are an absolute nemesis of this this watch and this design and this isn't now this has gone back at least five to seven years that I know of and if you don't believe me go on to the forums and ask questions please excuse the reflections on this that's just basically me looking at the camera I don't think it wants to look at me and probably crack the screen but can you just imagine if you bought this as a present and I, I did have this issue earlier on one of the pins started popping out now if you bought this as a present for somebody you were trying to impress your dad brother uncle cousin whoever one of your group members and they didn't know about the pin problem they wore the watch they'd taken the pin and adjusted it thought everything would be fine and then it dropped out and the watch dropped to the ground and smashed how would you feel I know that the recipient of the watch and the gift would be devastated Seiko needs to pay attention to that attention in the detail the devil in the detail it's a massive weakness and it would bring down ordinarily what an entry-level divers watch would get probably a strong eight and a half to nine down to a seven only because the bracelet has that flaw combined with the over exhausted color and I, I have to say this I've looked at the other special editions of this particular model and they're vile they are as ugly as me and that's saying something now it doesn't mean that Seiko don't make good watches but I'm not reviewing other watches at the moment I'll do that in due course that's why I put the Seiko 5 down I actually think that's probably better value for money than this now I think that what they need to do is start to evolve with regards to this but I think that what's happened is they've recognized through social media of one thing that there are people out there that are prepared to buy on a lemming effect basis and what I mean by that is that they're prepared to buy a different model of the same version every year akin to the Invicta Club collectors they'll buy a watch just because it's new it's different it's the same brand but it's a slight variation now Seiko are not in the league of Invicta they are 10 streets above it in fact Invicta are vile I think they're horrible ugly watches and there we are I've gone on record saying it actually I'm looking at one in my tray and it's not a bad looking one but by and large you know what I mean but I think that what Seiko have to do is they have to recognize that they've exhausted this and even if they take a year or two out do that change it make it special make it cheaper even so that shallower pockets can benefit because it is a fantastic entry point divers watch probably the best out there and that's coming from somebody that isn't necessarily a huge Seiko fan certainly not of the divers I don't I don't particularly need them although I do have them in the collection because I would collect anything that goes tick tock so that's my review I don't apologize for being honest I don't apologize for picking faults with regards to the over exhausted coloration of the Pepsi scheme I don't apologize certainly not for the, the poor quality of the bracelet I really want to just whack that and 
I do think that they could actually take away the day date and put that money, because you will save money, I should imagine, and put that resource into providing a far better strap. Other than that, I really would say it's a fantastic piece. But I, I genuinely, and I don't want to harp on about this, but it really does, it bothers me. Because this is the season of giving. And you guys out there, and you Seiko guys, you really know your stuff when it comes to Seikos. You would not want to give somebody a watch knowing that the pins could come out of the bracelet and that your recipient could be the victim of a broken watch. I wouldn't want to do that. And it's for that reason that I will not give one of these to anybody at this moment in time unless I change the strap myself or warn them. You can't always do that to somebody on a Christmas, for argument's sake. Say to them, here's a watch, but by the way, the strap might fall off. So, I'm just going to quickly jump on to the next video that we're going to do. And this is to encourage you guys to subscribe. Not for my ego, it's for the Just About Watches legacy. We need to get the word out. So, I'm going to do similar to an advent calendar. You know the type of things where you get the 24 days of Christmas with chocolates in each window? Well, I'm not going to do every day, but what I'm going to do probably once or twice even a week, leading up to the Christmas period, I'm going to give a watch away. Now, I'm not going to tell you which brand just yet because I haven't decided. I'm looking at a few and I will not be giving away rubbish, that's for certain. I will give something away that I can confidently give. More than I could with that Seiko. And I'm being honest about that. I really do love the paddy, but I don't like the bracelet. That hurts me, because I don't like saying negative things about watches. So, subscribe to the channel, like and share. This is a watch community, and what I would like to say to everybody, I will reach out to you now. Enough of this turf warfare with regards to groups. I respect you all, regardless of what nonsense goes on in politics. I will speak my mind because I'm honest. I have no vested interest. What I will say is watch communities and watch enthusiasts should we should embrace our shared passion we should all join hands we can keep our separate groups but come on everybody wake up to the fact that every single one of us will get touched by brain tumor cancer breast cancer colon cancer as one of my good friends died of today god rest her every one of us will get touched by it so let's get rid of this turf wars, please. Let's hold hands in unity and fight cancer research, or fight cancer by encouraging cancer research. I'm giving everything, everything I've got. I'm not asking anything off you except moral support. That isn't a lot, and it would take an awful lot for you to do that. It would make you the better person. So let's get rid of this criticism that is going around in social media. I don't apologize for using YouTube as, as the, the platform for making this appeal to you. I don't feel belittled. I don't feel small in any shape or form. I'm actually the bigger man to say to you, help. I need it. My wife needs it. The millions of cancer sufferers need it. Stand up, be counted, be proud. Good night, good evening, good morning, wherever you are in the world, and God bless.